Have you ever had a friend who did something inappropriate and when you tried to talk to them about it, they basically told you to f off? No? Well, I have. Let me tell you about it. Several years ago, in another lifetime, I had this friend, let's call him Lucifer. No, you're right. That's that's a little harsh. Let's call him Lewis, okay? And I met Lewis when I was out at a club one night with a couple of friends and he was out at the same club with his friends. We became fast friends. We ended up basically hanging out multiple times a week, every week for a few years. And his friends became my friends and my friends became his friends. Isn't that a song? My friends are your friends and your friends are my friends. But we did everything together. We obviously had parties. We went to dinner, lunch, breakfast. We just hung out at each other's houses, watched shows, movies, literally just anything. Just, we went boating, all that fun stuff. I was really liking this friend group and I genuinely thought that I was gonna be friends with them for the rest of my life. I thought I was making, you know how they say, make your family or whatever. I thought that's what, <laughs> I thought that's what was happening. For context, Lewis is white and he has a half sister who's half black and in our friend group multiple ethnicities so basically I considered him to be an open-minded person I just thought I never had to worry about any weird things with regards to race or anything like that with him a few years into our friendship one night I'm hanging out at his house with he and his roommates who were part of the friend group and one of the friends, one of our mutuals, and I say mutuals to mean one of the friends from our friend group, but I didn't know this person outside of the friend group. We're watching a movie or something, and there's a commercial that comes on. The channel has changed, and Obama shows up on the screen. And Lewis, unprovoked, says, well, you know the election was never oh, yeah. rigged, right? Pardon? I said, what? And he repeat, he repeated himself. And I looked around, and our mutual, who was also black, did bad an eyelash, and the other two guys who were white probably didn't even register what he said. And if they did, they didn't react. For several minutes go by, and I'm like trying to figure out what to do, and I sang my goodbyes, and I left. I'm flabbergasted, y'all. Our friend group was both men and women, but there would be times, like in this case, where I was the only woman, and so sometimes you just kind of let things slide, like you don't want to be a girl in the room calling guys out on their poor behavior. <laughs> Right? So like sometimes you just let things slide. But this time I was like, well, I, I don't feel comfortable saying anything right now, but I definitely am not going to stick around in this type of setting. Like, that's my cue to leave. A few days go by and I get a text from Lewis about us going to the gym together. So not too long before this, we had decided to start going to the gym together and he would let me go to his gym for free. And I'm sitting there thinking like, does this guy not realize what he did? He's just gonna brush it off. But then also he was that type of personality to not talk about things. So I could also see him realizing he did something wrong, but like either one, not thinking it was a big deal because I didn't bring it up or two, hoping that we wouldn't address it. Feeling uncomfortable as one does after something like that. I tell him I'm not gonna make it this time, but uh, we need to talk. Now I know what we need to talk sounds like to someone if you're dating them right it's like we're gonna break up but we were friends so i was like i don't know how else to put this and like he knows what he did so he he must know what i want to talk about and then i tried to coordinate with him a time to get together to talk and then he starts being evasive the next day or so i'm at a bar with our friend group i'm talking to one of our mutuals so i thought you know what even though I don't know her very well, I want to get her input on this and maybe ask her for advice on how to handle this. Even though I knew him longer than she did, like I'd known him for years at that point and she had only known him for, I don't know how many months, but I was like, you know what? They've been spending more time together. She might have some insight. I tell her about what happened. I am not one to gossip, so I was very matter of factly. I did not impart my opinions I literally just told her factually what happened. Oh, and by the way, let's call this girl Lorelai. I'm talking to Lorelai and we're in the bar with our group of friends, but she and I are kind of off on our own. I think what prompted this was he came into the bar and I saw him and he did not come and say hello. So I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here because let me tell you, Lewis always held me to a high regard. To my face, behind my back, he would always say good things about me whenever I would show up to a gathering. He would introduce me to people. He would announce, he would literally announce my presence. He 
pedestalized me. At least that's how it felt at the time. For context, Lewis was very attractive. He was one of those guys who could model, should have modeled, could get any woman he wanted, but also not only was he good looking, but he had a lot of money. So he literally had his pick of the litter. And I remember we were at a bar and I don't know how this came up, but he said that he thought he and I were equals in the looks department. The reason I brought that up is because for him to constantly be gassing me up and like talking positively about me to other people said a lot considering he thought very highly of himself. So if he was telling other people good things about me, I interpreted that to mean, oh, he thinks very highly of me. You know, he always made sure I was taken care of. He always looked out for me. So when he shows up at the bar and doesn't come and say hi, I'm like, skirt, hold on. I told him we need to talk. He did that weird thing. And now he's just clearly avoiding me. So that's why I brought up this situation with Lorelai. Cause I'm like, maybe she can fill me in. Maybe there's other stuff going on that I don't know about. Either before he walked into the room or before I brought this up, she had been telling me about a situation she was having with our mutual friend, let's call him Hansel. They had been seeing each other and she was having some issues with their, I guess, situ <laughs> situationship or whatever it was. I don't, I don't actually know, but she was asking my advice. So then I in turn asked for her advice with Lewis by telling her what happened and then saying, and now he's avoiding me. Like he just came in and he's not even coming in to say hello to me. And you know, he always, he would always hang around me too. When we would hang out in groups, he would find ways to come and like hang out with me. That was weird for him to come in and not even acknowledge me. And I could tell he was doing it on purpose. You know, it was just how he chose to handle the situation. She said, he's being childish. You should talk to him. The childish part, she literally said that word. And that's going to be important later because I don't like to gossip. I also don't want to agree because I don't want to be disrespectful. So I just say, well, you know, I've tried. I don't say, yeah, you're right. He is being childish. childish. I just say, well, I've been trying to talk to him and he just, he's been avoiding me, right? So I didn't even agree with her. I didn't even acknowledge that she said that really. I just was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna like, bad mouth him right i'm just t telling her what happened it's not important for me to say that because she already knows his personality so she feels that i don't need to i don't need to agree right like she's already decided that's how it was, how he is and whether i agree is irrelevant and i'm like okay well i also would say in your situation talk to hansel and let's just agree we're both gonna talk to them that's it we go on about our evening hanging out with everyone it wasn't that long of a conversation i'm thinking everything's cool but over the course of that week still not getting any reply from lewis I'm like okay well he'll come around when he wants to i guess but it's awkward because we have the same friend group at this point so anytime we all get together he and i are in the same room but he's just ignoring me. He's like pretending I don't exist or talking around me. He'll like mention my name, but he won't actually talk to me directly. About a week goes by. I'm in my room, in my apartment, minding my own business. Out of the blue, I get a text from Lewis. This was verbatim what he said. I hear you've been talking shit about me. This next part, is, I'm paraphrasing. I heard you say I'm childish. And then this next part was verbatim. Lose my fucking number. This guy I had been friends with at this point for four years, just randomly texts me that. And I'm like, what the? Immediately I'm like, okay, he used the word childish. Who's the person who said he was childish recently? Wasn't I, it was Lorelai. So I'm like, okay, so she told him what I said. Now I didn't tell her not to, but I didn't think I had to because I literally just told her the facts. I didn't say anything bad about him. If you don't want people to know about you doing bad things, then don't do bad things. I was asking for her advice. I wasn't like gossiping about him. And now he's mad. Maybe there was a misunderstanding. The fact that he's saying that I called him childish, however, is suspicious because if she said you're being childish, why would he say that I said that? Unless she told him that I said that. Do you, do you, do you follow me? So I call him and he doesn't answer. And I call him and he doesn't answer. And then I contact Lorelai. She picks up and I'm like, hey, are you with Lewis? Cause he just 
texted me and told me to lose his fucking number. And I know you and I talked recently. I'm just curious what's going on here. She said she was with him. I assumed they were together because I figured he would have texted me immediately after her telling him whatever she told him. I'm like, well, can I talk to him? She talks to him off the phone and then it's like, oh, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, bet, all right. So she's being shady. Also, I'm like, let me not make any assumptions. It seems really suspicious, but it's possible that she told him he was being childish and he assumed she said, I, I don't know. That's a stretch, right? But I'm like, unless I actually was there or they tell me that, I don't know exactly what happens. I'm gonna suspend my disbelief here. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm also never gonna tell her anything again. I'm gonna take a step back. And I'm not going to assume she just threw me under the bus, even though that's what it's that's what it's looking and smelling and walking like, a duck. I would say I exchanged texts with him, but I think I just literally responded to him. I'm not trying to start anything between the two of them, so I don't tell him, actually, she's the one who said you're childish. I just said, hey, I didn't say that about you. I would prefer that you and I actually talk. I, I don't think I ever heard from him again. I don't think he ever responded. Literally, that was the end of our friendship. Strangely, I ended up moving in with one of our mutuals who had bought a condo. And remember earlier how I said, you know, he and I hung out with the same friend group. So when we would go to get togethers, he would be there, but he wouldn't talk to me. The mutual and I, whose condo I was living in, decided to throw a party. And so we invited our friend group. First of all, it was her place. And second of all, I didn't want to tell her, you can't be friends with him, you know? So I was like, invite whomever you want, it's fine. He comes to our apartment, this place where I reside, this place where I'm paying rent, says not a word to me the entire time. You don't want to know what he actually does? I'm sitting here, he's sitting here, he's talking to this person over here, he mentions my name to that person. It's as if I'm not there. He was literally talking about me as if he and that other person both had me as their mutual friend and they were just talking like, oh yeah, Lola did that. And I'm like, what the fuck? where am I? Am I in the twilight zone right now? Like he had enough sense not to start drama there. So he was still not saying anything bad about me, but he would not look me in the face and talk to me. Like what the f To this day, he's never spoken to me. That taught me a really big lesson. One, don't tell anyone your business if you don't know them very well. I had no idea that Lorelai was going to be, I'm just going to call her so-and-so instead of the S word that I want to call her. It's an animal that slithers in the ground. I'm trying not to be messy. I'm just telling you a story so that you can learn from my mistakes and not have the same outcome as I did. Hopefully you have better friends than this. But to this day, I've never spoken to either of them. It wasn't for lack of trying. He just decided to write me off for good. And I have no idea how he's doing. What I thought was a friendship that would last a lifetime dissipated like that, poof. All because this person didn't want to take accountability for what he said, didn't want to be mature and have a conversation. Honestly, at the time, I was the type of person who would have forgiven him and moved on if he had apologized and we came to an understanding that that was uncool and that he shouldn't do that. Like what he said was terrible, but like it could have really been smoothed over like that. Like I would have been like, cool, we're good. Just don't do that, that's not funny, right? Cause he thought he was being funny. He thought he was making a joke, but he used the hard R. So now if that happened, I would gracefully bow out. I would remove myself and I would no longer associate with that person. I wouldn't confide in anyone, that's for sure. <laughs> Except for my husband or my sister. Those are the two people I trust with stuff like that now. All I have to say is, learn from my mistakes. Don't trust anybody. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Even if you think you're saying something to someone that could never backfire on you, if you don't know them like that, like I literally thought Lorelai was just gonna give me advice, we'd move on, that was it. I honestly, it didn't even cross my mind that anything like this would happen. I, I'm still to this day so confused. Well, actually, I forgot about this. Uh, a mutual of ours who I can give you a story time about another time because that person, I honestly don't even remember her name. Let's call her C. We hung out a couple of other times. Giving her a surface level rundown of what happened. I did not go into detail because I learned my lesson, but I just basically told her, Lewis isn't talking to me anymore. Lorelai talked to him and I don't know what's going on. C told me, oh, well, Lorelai likes Lewis and she's jealous. And that's why she did that. And I was like, 
and this was months after this happened I, th I think she brought it up and I was just like yeah I don't know that was so weird like I get Lewis and I aren't friends anymore and I don't even understand why it didn't occur to me because Lorelai was confiding in me about Hansel she and Hansel were seeing each other so I didn't realize she was into Lewis and that's why she sabotaged our friendship now I will say at the end of the day it was terrible that she did that but Lewis was his own person and he should have talked to me that's on him he needs to take ownership for his actions and his reactions and he didn't so I had to wash my hands of both of them it's unfortunate that there are people out there like that who are don't have the emotional maturity enough to take accountability apologize learn from their mistakes and move on I think he knew what he did and he knew that what he did was wrong and he did not like the icky feelings it was giving him and so rather than address it and talk to me about it like a mature adult he decided to just ghost me moral of the story is trust no one <laughs> men lie women lie actions don't lie if someone shows you who they are believe them and i guess in this case it didn't matter because they neither of them tried to associate with me after that but if they had then i would have been a sucker for continuing to associate with them be careful who you talk to and about what you talk <laughs> That sounded weird. I'm not a gossiper, except for with my husband and my sister. Like, they know everything, because I could trust them. And if they ever, if they ever stab me in the back, if they ever, all right, that will be my villain origin story. But uh, as of today, I feel like I can trust both of them. Outside of that, I don't tell people. You're not going to know about what's going on between another person and me unless that other person tells you and if you bring it up to me I'm gonna be like I don't want to gossip so I'm not gonna talk about that I don't know what they told you but judge me based on how I interact with you <laughs> yeah just be careful out there y'all uh, there are some shady people who for personal gain will do you dirty